Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I would like to tell you the major goal of my professional life, that is to bring viruses to the cancer front line and to help in fighting cancer. I will put now this virus here, and we'll take it later. Let's pretend that it is a virus. Cancer can strike anyone. In Italy, about one-third of all the deaths are caused by cancer. And globally, more than 12 million in 2008 got cancer, and 7.6 million died of this disease. But the good news is that we are improving. We are improving at all the levels. We are improving the prevention of cancer, the detection, the diagnosis, we are improving treatment of cancer. As a biologist, I feel that we are living in an incredible time with the enormous technolog technological advances which uh, improve our understanding of cancer. Cancer is not one disease. Cancer is a collection of at least 200 different diseases. And we now understand the mechanism why a cancer cell proliferates without control. We understand the capacity of the cancer cell to invade normal tissue, to metastasize in other parts of the body. And uh, all this knowledge is importantly is beginning to be translated in a new innovative treatments which are personalized, which are specific for certain cancer defects, which are much more efficient than the current in use therapies and uh, which have much more, much minor side effects. But now I want to tell you why it's so difficult to cure cancer. Imagine that uh, the cancer cell it's a, it's a big city, and uh, the pathway within the cancer cells are all the streets of this city. Now you have one of these pathways which is signaling, which is giving the signal to the cells to proliferate. It's the road of proliferation. So, cells proliferate, a tumor growth. So, if you block with an inhibitor this pathway, the cells are rest to proliferate, and the tumor stops to grow. But unfortunately, the cancer cell has the ability to acquire resistance to this drug. And, for instance, can develop an alternative pathway to proliferate. So we will need to combine the previous treatment with another blocker, which blocks also this alternative pathway. And not always we know this alternative pathway, and not always we have this inhibitor. So this is the difficulty. And here, I would like to tell you that uh, viruses, the class of viruses that I'm working with, oncolytic viruses, could help a lot, because could be combined be to other treatment, and because they have completely different mechanism of action, and, uh, and they kill cancer cells. So, oncolytic viral therapy is not my brilliant idea. But it's an old concept which is uh, standing for a long, long time. And here I give you an example which illustrates this. So there is a child this is an old study, you see, 1971, a child with a Burkitt lymphoma. And uh, this child gets measles, which is caused by measles virus, which is an oncolytic virus. And you see, the tumor disappeared. So, this is very nice observation. But now, it's hard to think that a doctor could go around with a 
human pathogens like a measles virus again treat cancer patients with that. So it's hard to believe, but this is what's done. But now we have a better alternative. So it came in the, the modern time, the new era, where we knew much more about virus biology, and we knew they, we acquired the tools, the, the molecular biology tools, to manipulate the virus genome. So we started to enter in the virus engineering area, where we constructed second, third generation of viruses, which are safer, so by deleting genes in involved in pathogenesis, or using viruses which are not human pathogens. And specific, meaning that uh, we are targeting specific defects of the cancer cell, and that the allowing the virus to replicate only in cancer cells. And we can also reinforce the oncolytic activity of these viruses by arming the virus with uh, heteropathic strand genes. And we are very close to what is the, would be an ideal oncolytic virus, which is a virus that uh, doesn't enter normal cells, or if, if entering normal cells, doesn't replicate the normal cells, and so the normal cells is spared. But on the contrary, this virus enters to cancer cells, multiply in cancer cells, and then end this cycle by lysing the cells, so by killing the cells, and releasing the progeny virus uh, to their side, and this uh, progeny virions can infect other cancer cells and the cycle restart again. It is imp what's important to point out here that with the lysis of the cells, we have uh, the release also of uh, specific anti-cancer antigens, which are recognized by our immunosystem, and the immunosystem becomes an ally of the virus to destroy the tumor. And so we have uh, a multiple mechanism of action acting here, which is uh, triggered by the virus. And as a matter of fact, now we have uh, at least more than 10 oncolytic viruses in clinical trials, and uh, two of them reached phase three clinical trials. This is a, a nerpes virus uh, against the metastatic melanoma and the rare virus against head and neck cancer. And there is another virus which is entering now phase three, which is the vaccinia virus against the petrocellular carcinoma. And I tell you, if all these viruses can reproduce the performance they have done in phase two, clinical trials with a smaller number of patients, then there is a justified optimism that there can be really a therapeutic option for patients with these diseases. Because their performance were superior of any other treatment in use now. It's also important to say here that uh, it's important to continue to work with all these viruses because, unfortunately, there is not a magic bullet, a virus that can kill all the cancer. But it could be that some virus are better for one cancer and another virus is better for another type of cancer. I'm working with uh, the lab, my lab is working with uh, H1PV, which is an empower virus, and we are testing now, we are just entering since one year, phase 1 to a clinical trial with the patients with a glioblastoma multiforme, which is the most common uh, brain tumor in humans. And, and uh, I will introduce you now to this virus. Uh, parvoviruses are among the smallest virus in the heart. And what is important here to know that are not pathogenic for humans. So we don't need to delete uh, uh, genes uh, involved in pathogenesis in this case, because the 
natural host are rats and not humans. But they can infect also normal, uh, can infect also cancer cells, and they kill cancer cells, human cancer cells. So they have a very interesting anti-cancer properties, which is oncotropism, which is a difficult word to say that they replicate preferential, preferentially in cancer cells, because the cancer cells provide a better milieu for the virus to replicate. At they have oncosuppressive properties, which is like the other virus, can induce lysis of the cells, kill the cells, and elicit an anti-tumor immune response. So now I give you an example of the efficacy of this virus, which um, uh, was done with a, an animal model of a glioma. Here you see, this is the the tumor, this is a, is a rat which has a brain tumor, and uh, we treat uh, at time zero with our virus, the tumor. You see at, time, at day three, already there's a tumor shrinkage, and then at day seven, the tumor disappeared. And this is a long-standing effect, so the animal is tumor-free for all the, the time of the experiment, which is in this case 150 days. So this is one of the evidence that brought us to the clinical trials. And uh, now the mission of my lab is to improve this virus and to make the second generation of pavoviruses that they could be one day, hopefully, to bring them to the clinical trial also, and uh, which we want to improve the specificity and the efficacy of these viruses. And I give you, there are some uh, challenges to do, some limitations to be overcome. And one uh, is uh, that uh, the virus, as I told you, infects uh, cancer cells but, and replicates preferentially in cancer cells, but can also infect normal cells. And the normal cells sequester part of the virus away from the tumor targets, and so reduce the efficacy of the treatment. So we would like, it would be great to have a virus which only re retargets to go to cancer cells, that it only goes to cancer cells. And uh, so we started to engineer this virus, the capsid of the virus. And we start, uh, and here it seems easy, but uh, actually the is to do this study is very challenging because it's, a, it's a, like to go against millions years of evolution. So we, we touched this point of the capsid and then we have a different changes of conformation of the virus and then at the end we, we end with, a, with a no virus anymore. So, but, so it's very uh, challenging to find the right position where we could manipulate uh, the, the capsid of the virus. So, but we found uh, a position where we could uh, tolerate the insertion of uh, uh, cancer-specific peptides, which recognize specific receptor which are expressed in cancer cells. And by doing this modification, now the virus acquired a neutropism which is more specific for the cancer cells. So preferentially prefers now to enter to cancer cells. A second challenge that we have to overcome is the following. So it's, it's the same as sample that I, I told you before of the city or the streets. So the virus uh, has the ability to kill a lot of cancer cells and it eliminates them. But imagine that there is a when some cancer cells which are resistant to the virus or that acquire resistance to the virus. So these cancer cells can multiply again and then we have a tumor relapse. That's what we, would, we don't want. So the, the task here is to, the challenge here is either to increase the potency of the virus that now can kill also res resistant cells or to make more sensitive the resistant cells uh, 
to the virus cytotoxicity or to find, to combine the virus with, uh, either, with other treatments, with other anti-cancer agents that uh, can kill the cancer cells. So we like this uh, third strategy, so we are devoting a lot of efforts in trying to find the drugs that could be combined with the virus, increasing the potential of the virus to kill cancer cells. And uh, we found one of these, which is vaproic acid, which is uh, in use now as an anti-epileptic drug, but also has some anti-cancer abilities. And um, this is an example. Um, so we know now that vaproic acid has the ability to boost the uh, cytotoxicity of the virus uh, in synergistic manner and uh, against uh, cervical carcinoma, against pancreatic carcinoma, which are two difficult tumors that, uh, for the virus. And uh, here you, you see uh, one of our experiments with uh, in animal models of cervical carcinoma, you see that uh, single agents alone are not able to, to have a really therapeutic effect on the survival of this animal. So the, the animal um, dying in the, in the first uh, 20 days. But together, you see this is uh, arrow indicates the, when the indicates the survival of co-treated animals, together these two agents are very powerful. We have 100% of survival of animals and uh, the animals are all tumor free and uh, they are tumor free for all the, uh, for all the now more than a year that uh, of follow-up experiment. So we hope uh, really now to bring this protocol into the clinic. And um, now to, to close my talk, uh, I want to say that another part of the lab is devoted to understand the virus life cycle, to try to dissect try this uh, virus life cycle to, to know what are the positive and negative modulators inside the cells which regulate viral replication and virus cytotoxicity. And uh, we hope to, that this information can be used for improving, for improving our vectors, and also they could provide information on the biomarkers that, uh, that can predict if one, one patient can respond or not to parvovirus cytotoxicity, a kind of a personalized parvotherapy. And uh, the path, this discovery path, is not always straight over or straight uh, <laughs> like uh, this arrow would indicate. It is more like a labyrinth. And uh, sometimes we have a lot of hurdles, a lot of obstacles to overcome. But this is what gr makes great my job, <laughs> the discovery process. And uh, I'm also very lucky to have uh, a, a very wonderful team of young uh, researchers that helped me to, to overcome these problems. And uh, with uh, their enthusiasm, we hope uh, that uh, we can bring these viruses to the clinical stage. Thank you. <laughs>